Gator football is brought to you by Massey Services and the Centricon System, the winning team for guaranteed termite protection. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Kangaroo Express, presenting sponsor of the Gators Salute to Those Who Serve. Welcome back to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. David Steele, Nat Moore, and Brady Ackerman. It is halftime. Florida Gator football on Sun Sports pay-per-view. John Brantley, the senior quarterback, throwing for 226 yards in the first half, has thrown the ball 20 times, completed 12, and the Gators have run the ball 15 times today against a Furman defense that has given up uh, an average of 23 points per game in FCS competition. So the Gators should be able to get pretty much what they want on the offensive side of the football if they execute well, which they did after a sluggish start. But it's on the other side uh, that uh, Florida has to have some answers for this young man, the senior who started his career at UCLA, played a couple of years uh, for the Bruins and then transferred to Furman University. The senior uh, record-setting quarterback in Furman football history and has had a pretty good first half himself. Seven of ten for 92 yards, a touchdown, has only been sacked one time. What about this quarterback battle? These are two talented QBs, Nat. Well, both guys are really doing a great job of leading their offense, not making any big mistakes, moving the ball up and down the field. And, you know, John Brantley is now really starting to get, get, get the feel of the game. I mean, uh, other than that last drive where he, uh, I thought he tried to get too much to uh, all three times, uh, they've done a good job of taking what the defense has offered them and, and moving their team down the field. So nice job by John Brantley in the in the second quarter. Great job by 4CA in the first quarter. So both guys are playing well. You know the Gators put up 27 points David but you know we forget that we, we move the ball down and, and miss two field goals. So a lot of offensive football for the Gators even though they got off to a sluggish start. Almost 300 yards in total offense. Caleb Sturgis was kicking off. And Cedric Cunningham brings it up for Furman. Boy, Cunningham has been a tough man to bring down. Carries it out to the 36-yard line where Furman will have it first down. Darren Kitchens made the tackle for the Gator kick return team. That is a 22-yard return for Cunningham. Kitchens getting some playing time. There's a flag on the field. Kitchens getting playing time. An injury to Lorente McCray. McCray had been coming on strong of late, but bad shoulder kept him out the last After couple the of games. Was over. Personal foul, number 22 on the kicking team. And we have a that personal foul tacked on, on a 15-yard penalty against First the down. Gators at the end of the return. That's not how Will Muschamp had hoped his team would come out and start the second half. And David, this is just uh, a lot of pushing and shoving after the play was over, and the person that got hit with that personal foul was uh, Elam. Um, hmm. Got into a little uh, tussle with uh, one of the Furman players. Here it is at Here's the end of the play. Furman on first down. The pass is caught by Maples and. The Paladins get about 10 yards to the Florida 39-yard line. Tyler Maple started his career at the University of Tennessee out of nearby Maryville High School and transferred in the spring of 09 to Furman. That catch for Maples, his second of the game. Chris Forcier, the senior quarterback from San Diego, California. First down at the Florida 39. Jerotis Williams. Nice kick off the 35 yard line to about the Florida 32. Jerotis Williams is a uh, very tough runner, hard to bring down, but David look like this gets good, good uh, body lean, and each and every time you hit him, he's falling forward. Good, strong runner. Williams is a 5'11, 195 pound junior out of Bill, Alabama. Number two run the Southern Conference. Which features the number two team, FCS Georgia Southern. Williams broke a tackle behind the, the line of scrimmage. 
And it stops short first down at the Florida 30 yard. Jay Howard was the first guy there and forced Williams to change direction. And this allowed the Gator defense to uh, come in and get up as uh, Jelani Jenkins get ready for the tackle. But nice job by Jay Howard of getting penetration, forcing Williams to cut it back. Here is a third down and uh, about two. And no one for my formation. Williams hit by Floyd, stopped at the line of scrimmage by Sharif Floyd. Nice job by Sharif Floyd of avoiding the blocker, shedding the block, and then doing a nice job of making the tackle. Here's Sharif right here. Now watch how he gets rid of the blocker. Then gets back into the hole, makes the tackle. Stayed low, good leverage. Excellent job by Floyd. It is fourth down, and Furman is going to go for it early in the third quarter. They don't have a great field goal unit, so they'll try for fourth down and two. Pitch, Williams, first down. Williams saw a gap and shot right through to the Florida 26-yard line. Manila made the tackle. This is uh, once he decided he was going to turn and go north and south. Plants his foot, gets very low, and just catapults himself forward to pick up the first down. Furman's gone for it twice now on fourth down and short. Picked up both conversions. This drive started near midfield after a personal foul against the Gators on the kick return. Play action fake for CA. Scrambling out now. He's got some running room. Jenkins chasing him out of bounds at the 17 yard line. You saw there the the athleticism and the quickness of Chris Forcier as he's able to come up. I mean Jelani Jenkins is a uh, phenomenal speed guy himself. He puts a move on and then is able to get around him and outrun him uh, up the sideline. Forcier has run for. 248 yards coming into today's game and a couple of touchdowns. He leads FCS football in pass efficiency. Number one in the nation. And another good run for the Paladins. This time it's the fullback, Tesso Uha, inside the Florida 10 yard line where it is first and goal for Furman. Well, this time you'll see Tessa Usa get the, get the good block downside, inside, excuse me, and then Kitchen coming upfield. They split it. Just, uh, I mean, this is just bread and butter football, David. I mean, nice blocking, good running by the tailback and fullback. They line up with Uha and Williams in the backfield out of the I formation. First and goal at the Gators' seven. Uha. Stacked up at the six yard line. Furman trying to take the lead that they squandered after jumping out to a 15 to nothing advantage in the first quarter. They led 22 to 7 at the end of the first period, and Florida reeled off three unanswered touchdowns in the second quarter. But Bruce Fowler's team is threatening to reclaim the lead early in the third. Forcier takes it and looks to throw for the corner of the end zone for Maples. Overshoots him, and it's third down and goal. Nice job that time by Matt Elam on the coverage. They tried to show him a, a post pattern and then go to the corner, and he wasn't fooled at all. Forces uh, Forcier to throw the ball high and wide outside. Ball just beyond the five yard line. The Gators can get a stop here. You can consider that a win David if you yeah. force them to sell for a field goal try. Two receivers to the left one to the right. Single back is Williams. Forcier wants to throw. He's got his man but his man is not going to go anywhere. Soft feet but that's going to be forward progress halted at the line. Tyler Maples and a lot of blue shirts converting. Another nice job by Matt Elam out in the flat. You know, doesn't come up with the tackle, but he forces him out of bounds. You know, just a good job of staying with him, forces him out of bounds.
Good pursuit by Florida. And the short field goal will be attempted by Chaz Short. It'll be a 23 yard attempt. It's pulled down and the kick. Good. So Short, who is now five of eight field goal attempts this year, brings the Paladins to within two. Early in the third quarter, Florida leads Furman 27 to 25. Welcome back to Gainesville. Furman, uh, short drive. They had good field position, and they kick a 23-yard field goal to bring the Gator lead down to 227-25. Let's check in with Brady. Jordan Reed here in the second half. He did not come back out with the team at, for the second half kickoff. Jordan Reed injured his left ankle, so A.C. Leonard and Omarius Hines will be your tight ends here to begin the second half for the Florida offense. All right. Thank you, Brady. Florida trying to, to get healthy for a big FSU game next weekend, but that's now the secondary motivation. They've got their hands full against Furman here in week number 11. DeBose brings the kick out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, and that's where Florida will have its first possession of the second half. And, David, let's see if this offense uh, that ended the, the first half clicking on all cylinders can get it cranked up again here early. Bradley with three touchdown passes in the first half. Gives to Rainey. Rainey is tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Lunging forward for a gain of three or four. Tyreek Phillips. He's a freshman nose tackle, number 56. On a tackle out of Ontario. And it's second down for the Gators. And off Rainey, sweeping to the right side. Again, Furman has bodies there, but Rainey able to evade a couple of potential Paladin tackle, tacklers and picks up the first down before Josh Lynn makes the tackle. First and 10, Florida. And then here we see the speed of Chris Rainey, and it just looked like he's under control, and then whenever he sees a gap, he turns on that, that, that second gear. 76 yards on the ground for Rainey on nine carries. And first down at the 49. Rainey gets the handoff again. Not much running room over the right side. Crossing midfield. And David, as you look at this Gator offensive line, Kyle Coney has moved out to the left tackle position, and James Wilson has uh, moved into the left guard position. Xavier Nixon is out of the ballgame. Hmm. Dan Winger out with an injury. Notre Dame transfer who started at center last week against South Carolina. Not a lot of depth on the either line of scrimmage offensively or defensively. Here comes a blitz. Hand off to Rainey. If he gets in the secondary, he might go all the way. Rainey stepping out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Couldn't quite get that uh, full stride, but he... Picks up significant yardage again. We talk so much about Rainey's uh, speed that we forget what a strong runner he is. He's a small guy, but he breaks the tackle of Nathan Wade before he goes out of bounds. I mean, here's a guy that is not very big, but very powerful. Now 96 yards for Rainey. Clay Burton takes the snap, and he'll keep the football. Tackled out of bounds by Steed at the 25. Gators go with a little wildcat where they split Brantley out. And uh, Trey Burton sneaks in, takes a snap, and does what he does best. Uh, Trey Burton probably has the, some of the best feet as far as agility on this football team, David. And Charlie White says we got to find him a, a position next year. And he's been moved all around the field for two years now. A very versatile, talented young football player. 
Bradley going to take the snap out of the pistol again on second down. Rainey gets the handoff and cannot break the tackle this time. An outstanding job by Mitch McGrath. Youngster, one of ten Floridians, Southern Conference Player of the Week. Boy, what a week he had a game against Tennessee Chattanooga several weeks ago. He had nine tackles, four quarterback sacks, and an interception in that game. Chris Rainey got a little nicked up on that. He's uh, yeah. sort of limping off. Second time today he's got that sore ankle. And the Gators will go with an empty backfield. And a spread look on third down and five. Brantley incomplete intended for Burton. And let's see if Florida brings the field goal team on now on fourth down and about five. Caleb Sturgis and company will come onto the field. Let's see if uh, Caleb can answer the field goal of short. He's already missed two today, but this time he's kicking from the center of the field. Should be a much easier kick. It will be a 43 yard attempt right in the middle of the football field. Sturgis, who has missed from 50 and from 40, knocks this one through from 43. So Sturgis having an All-American type of season coming in today. It missed a couple of field goal attempts earlier, but back on target there. Florida leads 30 to 25. Pretty good start uh, for Billy Donovan's club. Very talented team. Uh, Lost to an outstanding team at yeah. Ohio State. Tough loss. Tough schedule coming up as well. And the SEC looks very good at the top of the conference this year. Vanderbilt, Kentucky going to be outstanding. Looks like Mississippi State is loaded. Alabama in the West. Cunningham. And another flag on the return. Well, we've seen a lot of penalty flags on returns today. We'll see what this one is. And David, I'll tell you why. Because every return, they're running right returns, left returns, and you're trying to get to the wall. And in the process, you end up with a lot of blocking in the back as the as the the uh, return gets stretched out. During the return, holding on the receiving team, that penalty is 10 yards. First down. Now Cunningham, a dangerous return man. He he took 196 for a touchdown against Georgia Southern. One of the top teams in uh, FCS, ranked number two right now. Well, he's a threat every time he touches the ball on kick returns. But that time, a hold against Furman. And they've had fairly good field position all day long, but they'll be backed up this time at their 13 yard line. And there's the hole right there yep. as you see him holding uh, Quentin Dunbar, trying to keep him from making the tackle. Marcia rolling right, throwing for Hendricks. He had one foot in, stepped out of bounds. That's a good catch at the 20-yard line. And for Hendricks, his third catch of the game. For CA, number one in FCS, pass efficiency, 65.4%. And today has completed 9 of 13 against Florida. Second down and a handoff to Williams. Gerotis Williams fighting forward across the 20. And he'll be about a yard short of a first down. Well, fans today, as part of Military Appreciation Week, the Gators and Kangaroo Express salute those who serve. Soldiers lining the Gator Walk this morning. That was that was great to see. And the crowd here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium has been treated to a good football game. Furman hanging with Florida. Forcier keeping and getting nowhere. Bostic, the linebacker, comes in to make the tackle, but there is a flag down on the play. That play loses a couple of yards. Side on the defense, number six. But Florida was offside. Jay Howard. Must have lined up offsides. Now I, I think he he uh, moved he right jump? as the snap of the ball was uh, mm -hmm. about to occur. 
you know they come that when they rush up to the line of scrimmage like that David you got to get set and ready to go and on the first sound because they've gone first sound so many times it's easy if they give you a hard voice flexion to pull you offside and I think that's what happened with Jay Howard that time. So first down for the Paladins first downs are even at 15 15. 440 to play in the third quarter. Fortier pass incomplete. Intended for Will King who wanted a flag thrown but there is none. Good good pressure that time by the Gator defense uh, right in Fortier's face forcing him to throw an errant pass. Free blitzer right on the quarterback. When you give Fortier a clean pocket and a passing lane he can really sling the football. And when you when you look at Chris Morsi, a 6'3", 215 pound senior guy, knows where he wants to go with the football, understands the offensive uh, concept, and uh, very strong and talented uh, quarterback. And has only thrown six interceptions this year, 23 touchdowns. He'll keep sweeping to the left side and bounced out of bounds by Saunders. And as a true freshman, Pop Saunders on the tackle for the Gators. I think this is a broken play David he's looking to, to hand it off and the back goes the wrong way Williams and then you see him ad lib and he's trying to get as much as he can before he gets popped out of bounds but uh, just good quick thinking good quick reaction by Forcier once the, the back goes the wrong direction on the uh, handoff. The Furman has not been in very many third and long type situations today but they are now it's third down and 16. Another chance for the skater defense to get off the field. Short drop, quick toss. Pass is caught, but he'll be well short of the first down. That's the tight end, I think, Anderson, but Furman will have to punt the football. And David, that, that's just Furman saying, we're not going to make a big mistake here. You know, we're going to take right. a few yards, kick this thing away, and play defense. And uh, Daniel McFatton yeah. is the uh, receiver. But uh, this is a team that's not, they're not willing to make many mistakes. They, they're not going to beat themselves. You've got to beat them. They are plus 11. Short trying to draw a flag again. The punt is caught by Saunders. And Furman I think uh, they're upset because they believe Saunders called for a fair catch. Short also was looking for a roughing the kicker call. Well, nobody touched short. I mean, he's getting he's getting better at this thing, you know. He's trying for an academy. Bart is going to have the football leading 30 to 25 late in the third quarter in Gainesville. <laughs> well, fans, we're introducing a beautiful new way to show your school spirit. The FTD University of Florida Gators Rose Bouquet. Exquisite roses colored orange and blue exclusively from FTD.com. David Steele and Matt Moore up here in the press box. I knew something smelled good. It wasn't your cologne. We got a couple of dozen roses up here, Nat. Well, they, in, they only the said the roses because I was here. You, know, you don't talk about my cologne like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Back to football. The Gators leading 30 to 25. And with the ball, the hands off to Jeff Kemps. And the ball popped out. Florida recovered at the 35 yard line. The Gators had fumbled 24 times this year coming into the game. They had lost 11, but 24 fumbles in 10 games. That's well, quite a bit. And that's just uh, nice, solid tackling, putting the helmet on the football by McGrath, and the ball gets uh, fumbled out of bounds. You know, otherwise, they've recovered it. Well, no, the Gators actually got it back, but yep. uh, even though the ball went out of bounds. Gain of one. Well, Florida has lost 11 fumbles this year. They've only recovered three. Well, the Gators are coming to this ball game a minus 10 in the takeaway giveaway uh, category. Hunter Joyer <laughs> scored a touchdown from one yard out in the first half. Gets a couple of yards. You know, there are only six teams in FBS football with just three fumble recoveries, and Florida is one of them. You mentioned minus 10 in the turnover margin category ranks near the bottom in college football penalties and losing that turnover battle almost week after week. Those are problem areas that have to be resolved if this team is going to make a big step forward. 
That as well as the third down conversion and uh, red zone. Red zone. Yeah. Here's a big third down. Brantley. The pass is caught, but it looks like they're going to be short of the first down marker. Jeff Demps at the 42 yard line needed uh, about the 44. Nice tackle by Matt Solomon, the linebacker. When you can have a middle linebacker isolated on probably the fastest guy on the field, and he makes a play of that nature, David, where he's able to make that tackle in the open field, because if he misses him, he's gone. And that's the backup's middle linebacker because Kaderan uh, Anderson is out today with an injury. Christie and the fair catch call for a nice kick by Christie. And King makes the catch a 45 yard punt. And no return. But now you can save time, save money, save for the future with Regions Bank. Proud to bring you the breakfast with the Gators every week and proud to be the official bank of the Southeastern Conference. Let's go to the sideline and get a report from Brady. Well, I was going to jump in on your turnover discussion. You know, Nat and I talked about it earlier this week. Hadn't seen too many teams that can't get turnovers. You know, Florida had dropped a ton of interceptions against Tennessee, and since then they haven't been able to sniff an interception. Is it youth? Is it experience? You hope that gets turned around going to next year because they've got to get more turnovers from their defense. No doubt the Gators with only six interceptions, only three fumble recoveries all year. That's nine takeaways on the season in 10 weeks of football. And, and David, we, we talked about the... Prior to the snap, false start, number 88 on the offense. That penalty is five yards, still first down. Yeah, we talked about the transition on offense of going from the spread to a pro set. Well, defensively, there are some changes going on also. And what happens with young guys is you're so busy thinking about your assignment and thinking about so many other things because, and then you're not able to react accordingly. You know, a lot of it is reacting to what you see, and that's what this game of football is all about. Know your assignment and just react and make plays. Five-yard penalty against Furman. So they are first and 15, and Williams gets a couple of tough yards to the 10 yard line. No takeaways today for the Gators. Corsier is 11 of 16, a touchdown, no interceptions, and Furman has not fumbled the football. And, and Furman gets ultra conservative when you get them backed up. They don't want to give you the short field. Gators were able to get a short field with the block punt earlier, not able to capitalize on it. Well, they're in the game with a minute and a half to play in the third quarter, and they, they don't want to jeopardize the opportunity to steal a victory today. Corsier will throw, but it's overthrown and incomplete intended for Hendricks. And this is one of the few teams, David, uh, uh, that, that you will see when they spread you out. A guy like Hendricks, he's three, four yards from the sideline. As a defensive back, you don't want to go way out there. He'll just run a stop route yeah. at about five yards with the quarterback with a strong arm that can get it to him. Defensive coordinator Dan Quinn matching wits with Jimmy Kaiser the offensive coordinator for Furman who came with Bruce Fowler from Vanderbilt. They've got three or four coaches from Vanderbilt which you figure that might be a factor here today the way they know this Florida football team. They'll take a timeout Furman <laughs> Fowler but, uh, Kaiser with them from Vanderbilt mm -hmm. also Norval McKenzie their running back coach. From Vandy, their safety coach Mark Mooring, and Rick Logo, the defensive line coach. So they got five or six coaches that have been battling the Gators year after year. Well, today is part of Military Appreciation Week. The Gators and Kangaroo Express salute those who serve. Visit GatorZone.com forward slash salute and learn more about military appreciation week kangaroo express saluting our troops campaign and more store events third down and long Corsier steps up in the pocket the pass is deflected and incomplete Bostic got a hand on it and a near interception for Jonathan Bostic nice drop that time by Jonathan Jonathan Bostic good job of looking at the quarterback reading his eyes all the way gets up as high as he can go to uh, get a finger on that football and keep the uh, keep Furman from being able to complete the pass excellent route ran that time by Tyler Maple who was open in the scene 
Chad Short, the senior from Thomaston, Georgia, has had one punt blocked today. He stands in the end zone, gets it off. Saunders lets it bounce and roll. And a good firm and bounce out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Big punt by Short. That's a 61 yard punt with no return for Furman. Well, fans, the University of Florida is proud to host the 2011 NCAA Volleyball Regionals. That's coming up December the 9th and 10th at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. All session passes are now on sale and are $15 for reserved lower level seating. General admission passes are also available. Purchase your tickets to the NCAA Volleyball Regionals by visiting GatorZone.com slash tickets. Bradley throwing deep for DeBose. And he's got it. Beautiful catch. Andre DeBose goes deep again. Second time today. He caught an 80-yard pass from Brantley earlier, and this one goes for 64. And, David, when you look at the concentration, I mean, to be a great receiver, you've got to have phenomenal concentration, especially when balls are thrown and it look like you're covered, and somehow or another, each and every time, as the ball goes by the defender hand, you make the catch. Nice job of keeping his concentration and making the catch as he beats Derek Murray for the touchdown. And another extra point for Sturgis puts the Gators up by a dozen. Well, that is a beautiful throw by Brantley. And a great catch uh, for an old wide receiver, Nat. You really appreciate DeBose, the, the technique here, don't you? Well, right here, I'm giving this touchdown to the receiver. This is an okay throw, but a phenomenal catch that time by Andre DeBose because he keeps his eye on the football as it gets right over Murray's hand. He reaches up, catches the ball at the highest point, and then able to get it to the touchdown for his second touchdown of the day. And a little acceleration there of speed, a little burst at the end, too, yes, to, yes. to get up and get that ball. What a day for DeBose and Brantley. Brantley's fourth touchdown pass of the game. And DeBose's second reception for touchdown. DeBose has 151 yards on three catches. That's a productivity right there. And, and David, that's that's what we've been expecting out of Andre DeBose from the time that he came to the University of Florida. Now he understands the system. He's, he's, he's uh, got a quarterback that can get him the football down the field, and he's making those catches and putting points on the board for you. Sturgis will kick off for the Gators, now leading 37 to 25 late in the third quarter. Cunningham backing up into the end zone. He'll bring it out. Dangerous return man stopped at the 22 yard line. I'll tell you what, Cunningham's a good football player. Yes, he David. Is. Uh, not only does he have speed, you know, an outstanding receiver, but as a return guy, very seldom does the first guy get him down. He breaks tackles. And anytime you get a returner that has the ability to break tackles and then have speed, he always has an opportunity to take it to the house. Well, Furman always has talent. It's a good, solid FCS football program. They've got a couple of guys uh, currently in the NFL. Carolina Panthers, Jerome Felton, a fullback, and uh, a cornerback, William Middleton, plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars, former Paladins. And again, uh, everything I hear, Ryan Steed has a future in the NFL, a defensive back. He's been victimized a couple of times today. Breaking through the middle is Williams. Jerodis Williams down the sideline. It's a foot race, and he is shoved to the pylon. Touchdown. How about that? Furman gets a big run from Williams and comes right back with an answer near the end of the third quarter. That is a 76-yard touchdown run by Williams. And, and, David, all afternoon we've been talking about the power and the strength, his ability to break tackles, not able to lock up. And then you see the speed as he's able to outrun Pop Saunders. Matt Elam. Elam and Watkins had an angle on him. Just a great effort. Gators have a man down at the 32-yard uh, line. There's another look at it. And, you know, you, he, he does a nice job of staying upfield. And uh, hits the pylon. You know, Jalen Watkins tries to push him out of bounds. 
Omar Hunter is the uh, injured player for the Gators. Short will attempt the extra point. And he makes it a five point game again. So just when it looked like Florida might begin to pull away from Furman, the Paladins answer with a 76 yard touchdown run by junior Gerotus Williams. Give him 77 officially now. He goes over the 100 yard mark for the fifth time this year. Well, he is just having a great football game. And Furman continues to hang right in there with the Florida Gators late in the third quarter. Once he got through the line of scrimmage, it became a foot race. Well, here's another look at it, and you see Omar Hunter in the middle of your screen, and he's being held by the uh, by uh, the uh, center uh, Emert. But uh, nice job of running by Williams, and uh, a great job of staying in bounds as Jalen Watkins comes and tries to push him out of bounds, but he dives for the pylon and gets the touchdown. Williams showing some outstanding speed. And the Furman Paladins out of the Southern Conference are going to take home a paycheck of $450,000 today, win or lose. But they're giving the Gators a lot more than Florida bargained for on this uh, 11th week of the season. Victories uh, against ranked teams in FCS, Wofford and Appalachian State. They suffered a big loss last week at home against Elon. It may have uh, knocked them out of the postseason playoff, but if they score an upset victory today, then that's probably going to happen for them as well. Demp's trying to bust through, but he's tripped up. And Florida will have it with 25 seconds to play in the third quarter at their own 32 yard line, now leading by only five again. John Brantley has he's gone the distance at quarterback for the Gators. Florida had hoped to give Jacoby Brissett and Jeff Driscoll some playing time today. Brissett took one snap at the goal line and that's it. Brantley fakes the end around swings to pass to Rainey. And he gets about 10 yards before he is bounced out of bounds at the 42 yard line. A little razzle dazzle by the Gators as they bring uh, the receiver in motion. You got Frankie Hammonds coming back in motion. Looked like it's going to be a reverse, and then you toss it out to Rainey. And nice job of getting upfield. Rainey gets pushed out of bounds there at the last minute by Murray. And. Uh, Nothing happens to a sleeper but a dream. You got to keep your head up. <laughs> Give him 10 yards on the play. Laney reverses field and now in trouble. Down he goes. A loss of seven. Josh Lynn having a great year for Furman, a junior from Fort Lawn, South Carolina, number 91. Josh. Came into the game with nine and a half tackles for a loss. There's another big one. Yeah, that's a big play there because that's a uh, seven yard loss and uh, backs the Gators up. Uh, that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. The Gators trailed by 15 points early, took a 12 point lead, but now up by only five as we head to the fourth quarter. Gator football is brought to you by Regions Bank, proud to be the official bank of the Southeastern Conference. Verizon, official wireless provider of the Florida Gators. The Florida Department of Agriculture, proud sponsor of the Florida Gators. UF and Shands, Florida's premier academic health center. And by Kangaroo Express, presenting sponsor of the Gators, salute to those who serve. We are back in Gainesville. David Steele and Nat Moore along with Brady Ackerman on the sideline. Gator football on Sun Sports. Pay-per-view. The fans have gotten their money's worth. Who have uh, tuned in to watch Florida Furman. Brag a big day. 304 yards, four touchdowns. Those are career highs for him in a game. But the Furman Paladins have 383 yards in total offense. The Gators play in the likes of South Carolina, Alabama, LSU, Auburn, Georgia, 
Vanderbilt, good football team this year, but giving up 305 yards per game. Furman has 383 with 15 minutes to play. And the Gators find themselves in a battle with 15 minutes of football to go. Bradley's pass is intended for Deontay Thompson. No chance to catch it. And it's going to be third down and 15. Make that 17 for the Gators. And David, we, we, we've hit some deep ones, and, 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 and at times, like we fell in love with that instead of, you know, getting some of those eight yard tosses that set up a good third and short. You know, the Gators had problems all year long staying on the field on third down, and now you've got a third and 17 instead of third and eight, third and, 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 and six, a convertible third down uh, opportunity. Laney is the run back with Joyer. Bradley out of the pistol formation. A snap. Bradley stepping up in the pocket. Throws a strike. The ball is caught. And a first down pickup. Beautifully done. Excellent job by Dunbar, who hauled in that touchdown pass earlier. Quentin Dunbar had that 29-yard touchdown strike and a big third down conversion. Good blocking by the offensive line. Nice job by Coney picking up the blitz out there and an excellent run after the catch by Dunbar to get the first down. Comes back, meets the football, makes sure the catch squares up, makes Murray miss, and then gets forward for the first down. Freshman from Miami with a big catch. An important conversion for the Gators. On the draw play, Chris Rainey. Picking his way through the middle. Rainey getting his uh, 14th carry of the game. Chris Wiley made the tackle. He's been the workhorse today out of that tailback position. Well, as I said earlier, he, he is uh, very surprisingly super strong. I mean, he's been knocked out of the game a couple of times, went out limping, but comes back and gives you everything he got on every play that he's in the ball game. They give it to him again, sweeping to the right side. Rainey looking for the corner, cannot find it. A nice job pursuing by Furman's defense. McGrath was there. Solomon, who's done a terrific job filling in for Kader and Anderson, their leading tackler, out with, a, with an injury this week. Number 43 has plugged that gap. I tell you what, as good as Solomon has played, you have to wonder how good is Anderson. Yeah. I mean, if uh, you know he can't get on the field because Anderson is such a great player, uh, how good must he be to keep Solomon on the bench? Anderson, uh, the Southern Conference's leading tackler, unable to play today with a bad ankle. A big third down for the Gators at the Furman 37. The action fake, Brantley scrambling. Now throws it to an open Deontay Thompson, but it is overthrown and incomplete. Brantley flushed out of the pocket. Thompson had a lot of room around him, but the pass sailed out of bounds. Yeah, Brantley not able to set his feet and throw the football that time, and you know he, he just sort of tried to arm it out there instead of being able to step into it, and the uh, ball sailed on him a little bit, David. And the Gators are going to try a very long field goal. Sturgis has missed from 50 and from 40, but hit from 43. This one from 55 yards. It is in the air. It looks good. It's got plenty of distance. 55 yard field goal by Caleb Sturgis. That matches his 55 yarder against Vanderbilt a couple of weeks back. And David, after missing two field goals, you would think that Caleb Sturgis' confidence is gone. You think the coaching staff confidence is gone. You give him a shot, he proves you're right as he knocks it through from 55 yards out. Big three points for the Gators, now leading by eight. Today's telecast of Florida Gator football is brought to you by Regions Bank, a proud statewide sponsor of the Florida Gators and the official bank of the SEC. Well, it's been a special day saluting those who serve Military Week at the University of Florida. And some military folks out on the field uh, just a moment ago getting saluted by a Ben Hill Griffin Stadium crowd watching a terrific football game. Furman hanging with the Florida Gators to their credit. 40 to 32 now after the 55 yard field goal by Caleb Sturgis. Furman going to bring it out from the goal line. That's Hank McLeod to the 21 yard line. Haters kicked it away from Cunningham that time, a 22 yard return. You think? <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, 
Good coverage by the Gator special teams getting down there, bringing McLeod down just uh, inside, or should I say at the 21 yard line? But uh, good coverage. Now let's see if, if this defense can get a three and out and get this offense back on the field. Allen shocked the Gators with a 76 yard run by Gerotus Williams on their last possession to cut the gap down to five, but a Long field goal by Sturgis has Florida back up by eight points again. Chris Forcier picked off and into the end zone goes Pop Saunders. There's that mistake that Forcier has rarely made this year, and the Gators get a rare turnover that goes in their direction. A pick six for Saunders. And David, they've been going to the tight end, going to the slot, little sit down route right there in the open area. And Pop Saunders sat back, read the quarterback's eyes, and just jumped the route on the release of the football. And the extra point by Sturgis puts the Florida Gators up by 15. That's their largest lead of the game with 12.52 to play in the fourth quarter. A true freshman, Saunders from DeLand High School. And Forcier throwing only his seventh interception of the year. Now watch Pop Saunders. He's up at the top of your screen. He's sitting there. He's reading it. He's reading it. He sees the tight end sit down. Ball's a little late. He pops right in front of him, picks it off. Touchdown. That's two picks, two games in a row now for Saunders. He got one last week against South Carolina. And, and David, you remember I, earlier I talked about once you get where you understand the defense, you start to react and read. You know, he's seen enough of this. He's seen them do this several times. Now he sees it. He sees it coming. It's like in slow motion. He steps in front of the tight end, picks it off, touchdown. Good you know, recognition. You know, Nat, you're exactly right. The last two weeks with those interceptions, he played football. He made the read and he broke on the football. Remember, Paul Saunders was the starting corner two weeks into training camp, and they moved him to safety because he was more of a short tackler than the other guys were there. He could be on his road to being another Ahmad Black, certainly built like Ahmad. Ahmad played corner in high school, then moved to safety. That's what we've seen out of Pop Saunders. Looks like a good football player for Florida. Well, it, it's all about having good hands and, and believing in yourself. And that time, you know, he ran it properly, caught the ball in his hands, and then did what uh, you expect to see him do, run with it and put points on the board. This time, McLeod will down the ball in the end zone. A deep kick by Sturgis. And Herman will have it at the 20. Now trailing by 15 points. They led by 15 points in the first quarter. And 15 to nothing. And again at 22 to 7. Bruce Fowler's team trying to get their seventh win of the year. Florida needs a win to become bowl eligible. Furman, if they could pull off the upset today, would most likely get a bid to the FCS championship tournament 20 team field. And they are just outside the top 25 going into today's games. Williams, the ball carrier. Short yardage on first down. It'll be second down and about seven. The tackle by Leon Orr, number 44. That shirt freshman out of Newport Ritchie. Getting some playing time here with Florida up by 15 points. Orr backs up Dominique Easley. On the nose. Well, call it second and six for Furman. McLeod, the lone setback, Forcier stepping up. He's going to keep the football. And he looked like he might have had the first down, but he tried to get a little bit more and perhaps lost it. Matt Elam makes the tackle on Chris Forcier. Nice job by uh, Matt Elam. He's made several big plays defensively. Didn't, didn't seem like big plays, but it was plays that helped stop drives co contained uh, this uh, Furman offense, keep him from getting uh, first down. So good job by uh, Elam. Looked like he's a little hobbled coming out the field. Furman's just one of ten in third down conversion. This time they need less than a yard. Williams and Uha, the running backs, it's Gerotus Williams. He has stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but he was able to lean forward. 
Sharif Floyd had a grasp on him. But the spot looks good for the Paladins. I tell you what, that was a very generous spot there, David. Yep. Uh, it looked like he was down way behind that 30 yard line marker. So Forcier and the Paladins move the chains. 17 first downs for Furman, 18 for the Gators. Florida now has rolled up 438 yards in total offense. Furman is up close to 400. Forcier deep down the right sideline and too deep, but a flag is thrown. Watkins was in coverage. He's covering McD McFadden, rather, the wide receiver. And their feet got tangled up down the sideline, and Watkins apparently is going to get flagged for a pass interference. Well, I guess there's two ways to look at it because he threw the hat, which meant the receiver was out of bounds, which also should have meant he was ineligible. Pass interference on the defense, number 14. That penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Results in a first down. I, I don't really understand that because if you're throwing the hat, which means he's out of bounds, well, if he's out of bounds, hmm. he's not even eligible. How can it be pass interference? Yeah, I don't know. Watkins doesn't know either. McFadden, who is a cousin to Darren McFadden, the former Arkansas Razorback, current star in the NFL, gets the benefit of the flag there. And Furman has a first down at the 45-yard line. Forcier pass too high and incomplete. Watkins covering on McFadden again. And the Gators are starting to do a better job of on those stop routes getting there be, being a factor. You know, after a while, you don't be surprised if you don't see them try and run a stop and go because the Gators are starting to creep up and make plays on those little short routes. Bruce Fowler and his staff have had a good game plan against an outstanding defensive Gator football team. Ran a few trick plays in the first half, and uh, Matt, you and I wondering at halftime if they might not have another trick or two up their sleeve before it's all over with. I would not be surprised. On second down, the ball carried to the 48-yard line by McLeod. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the University of Florida uh, getting pushed around after the play is over, and... Uh, and after a while, you're going to start having some uh, fist cuts out here if the officials don't take control of it, David. Florida penalized six times today for 60 yards. Furman five times for 43 yards. Third down and eight for the Paladins. Florida showing blitz. They come after Forcier. He throws a strike complete first down for the Paladins. And Furman continues to move the football. Tyler Maple with the catch, and that's a big-time throw by the quarterback, Forcier. That was an outstanding throw as he's getting hit. Uh, you know, he, he got really popped that time by Jay Howard, and he's able to get that ball off. Nice drop by, job by Maples of catching the football and continuing to make pass. But there you see Jay Howard coming in and uh, laying, laying the boom on him, but uh, nice throw. And then they're taking the punishment. Forcier shaking up a bit on the play as Maples has his fifth candidate. Forcier now 12 of 21. And McLeod, uh, as a flag is dropped, is tripped up at the 30 yard line. Gators think it's going to be a hold. And it is. Number 88 on the offense. That penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Tight end Colin Anderson got caught trying to spring the ball carrier McLeod. Haven't you know they opened up the ball game with a lot of that quick pitching, trying to get outside, trying to you know uh, flank the defense, and they went away from it. Now they 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 come back to it, but nice job by the Gator defense of being alert, not allowing them to get outside, forcing the hold new penalty. Penalty is now even at six apiece. First down and 20 at the Florida 42. Fullback Uha. A couple of yards, and that is it. Easley and Bostic 
on the bottom of that pile along with William Green, number 96. David, as I look at this football team from Furman, I, I, I watch their backs. You know, they hit it up in there, they hit it up in there tough, but if you notice, they keep their feet moving each and every time. Very seldom do you knock them backwards because they are cheap, keeping those feet moving and uh, got a good body lean going forward. They've given Florida all the Gators can handle today. They're in the fourth quarter. The Gators lead by 15. A little extra push by Easley. No flags so far. You know, He's an emotional guy, Dominic Easley. Emotional is one thing, David, but at some point, the play is over. The quarterback's down, and all you can do is hurt your football team. And they get him off the field. Yes. But it's third down now for Paladins at the 41 yard line. Forcier brings him to the line of scrimmage. Ninth play of the series. Forcier wants his man to go deep. Now throws it downfield. It is incomplete. Batted away by Riggs. Intended for Will King, but good coverage by Cody Riggs. Outstanding play by Cody Riggs, but defensively, we come very close here, David, of making a mistake. Now, people start to come out of the secondary. Stay back. Let him run the football. Make sure he crosses the line of scrimmage. You don't open up receivers by starting to come up thinking that you've got to make a play on the quarterback. He's got 20 yards he's got to run. Good play by Riggs. Oh, super very play by nice. Riggs. And it's fourth down now. Furman. Trailing by 15 points is going to roll the dice with 7.33 to play. Facing a fourth down and 19. They've got to get all the way to the Florida 22-yard line. And the delay of game penalty is going to come against Furman. Five more yards against them. Let's see if they rethink their strategy. I, I think for Furman, they're more concerned with being able to get the ball back. The Gators have been able to move the ball up and down the field since the second quarter. So if you need two scores, you know, it's kind of hard to make yourself kick it away, especially when you've wasted a timeout already. If I'm the Gators, I'm putting the defense in there. I'm looking for trick plays. I don't even worry about fair catching the football here. Fowler decides to go ahead and pump the ball short. Puts a foot into it. It's a nice, nice spiral. And a fair catch is made by Saunders at the 13-yard line. No return on a 34-yard punt. 7.25 remaining. Florida 47, Furman 32. From FTD.com. There they are. We've had them in the booth all afternoon long. Just Smelling it up nice here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Very nice. Florida taking the football after the 34 yard punt by Furman. Jeff Demps takes the handoff on first down. Very important, David, that the uh, Gators uh, get a couple first downs. They don't have to score, but you want to take some time off this clock. If clock is your ally at this point in time, but you don't want to shut it down and just give the ball back to this Furman football team. They're very explosive offense. Well, we've seen that today. They've got a quarterback that can throw it. Williams, uh, an outstanding running back. Demps tripped up near the line. He'll get nothing on second down. It'll be third down and eight. Furman has played since 1982 when one double A was put into existence by the NCAA. They're 521 and one against FBS teams. They have not beaten an FBS football team since 1999 when they beat North Carolina. They played South Carolina last year and lost to the Gamecocks 38 to 19. Third down for the Gators. Brantley has time and throws. It is incomplete intended for A.C. Leonard. And Florida is three and out with 6-11 to play in the football game. 
Good coverage by Gary Wilkins. Gary Wilkins, uh, he's, you know, he's been close earlier in the ball game. If you remember, A.C. Leonard made a great catch to get the first down on third down. This time, he played the percentages, got in the throwing lane. Kyle Christie standing at the goal line. Low line drive returnable for King. And he picks it up. We'll try to do something with it, but Florida swarms him under at the 46 yard line. Nice coverage by Florida on the punt cover. 39 yard punt. Gators 47, Paladins 32 in the fourth. Will Muschamp's Florida Gators lead the Furman Paladins 47 to 32. Exactly six minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Hey, Gator fans, let's boost Florida tourism and win the title of Florida's number one fans. Just head to Facebook.com slash share a little sunshine and invite everyone you know to visit Florida. Sounds like a good idea. Let's check in with Brady Ackerman on the sideline. Brady. Thank you, David. Quick update on Florida's second leading tackler, Matt Elam. He tweaked his left groin. They stretched it out, but it's an injury that's been with him since the Vanderbilt game. I think they'd like to hold him out up two scores, so Elam not in on defense for the Gators this series. All right, you've got uh, Florida State next week. Regular season finale. You've got a 15-point lead on Furman. 47 to 32. The first down pass from Forcier is incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Nice job that time by Sharif Floyd. Not able to get penetration into the pocket. Looked at the quarterback. Saw he wanted to throw his throw the ball in his direction. Got his hands up. Forced him to throw it uh, a little wide. Now that's what you got to do. You got to have play recognition. Sometimes you're not going to get there, and uh, somehow you got to be a factor. And off to Williams. Jay Howard meets him behind the line of scrimmage. Howard fighting off his man and coming up with a big defensive stop. There's a nice job. He's over the guard. He, he looks like he's going to go inside. He hops around him outside. He's got such great quickness. He's able to hop around the guard and still get back inside to make the tackle on a play that's going right up the center. Howard and the Gator front line after a slow start today. He played much better after the first quarter. Third down and 12. Forcier looking. Floyd is in his face. The pass down the sideline is caught. What a beautiful catch by Anderson, the talented tight end. Leading receiver for Furman. It looked like Forcier had nothing. And they pick up a first down on a 19 yard play. And this is just a nice twisting turning catch realizing where he's at on the sideline is able to get that uh, left foot down before he goes out of bounds. Anderson walked on to Furman. Earned a scholarship after his first year. And what a player he has become 38 catches coming into the game. That's his second reception today. RCA passes caught and about a six or seven yard pickup. Cameron Mason is the other tight end for the Paladins. That'll stop the clock with 436 remaining as he went out of bounds. Boy, Furman scores a touchdown here. And you got the potential for an onside kick. Things yep. could get very interesting. And where would the Gators be without that pick six by Pop Saunders? That we was have a, a one possession game. Well, that's a big play, and uh, you know we've uh, been talking about the lack of turnovers and takeaways. So, see if we can get something else similar. There we There's go. another one, and it's going to go for another touchdown. Jelani Jenkins, all the way for the score. You know, David, nice call. I love it when you talk about turnovers and where we would be and all of a sudden we get another one you know and this is just an errant pass this is all for CA where he lobs the ball the receiver never sees it coming he overshoots his intended receiver Jelani Jenkins one of the guys that early in the year had opportunities to make those kind of interceptions not able to hang on this time he made the short catch. And then he knew what to do with it after the after the interception. And an extra point by Sturgis makes it 54 to 32, a 
22 point cushion with only four minutes left in the game and two pick sixes thrown by 4 C8 today. One by Saunders, the other now by Jelani Jenkins for 71 yards. And if you want to learn how to play weak side linebacker, now watch Jelani Jenkins here in your screen. And he'll take a quick look outside. Then he goes back to the quarterback, sees the release of the football, and he's able to catch the football. That time he relaxed as he's catching the football, didn't fight it. And then you know he's got speed to burn. Now Jenkins, a uh, speed burner. Coming out of high school. Jelani Jenkins, 71 yard interception return for the touchdown. Two interception INT touchdowns for the Gators today. Furman cut the lead to 37 32 late in the third quarter on that 76 yard run by Williams. Since that time, the Gators kicked a 55 yard field goal, to Sturgis. And that guy right there, Forcia, has thrown two interceptions for touchdown. For Florida now with 17 unanswered points since Furman cut the lead to five late in the third quarter. And David, you know, when the average person picks up the paper and see the Gators winning 54 to 32, they'll think that this was a blowout and uh, et cetera. But you know, Furman has been into this ball, been in this ball game all the way up until the bitter end. Again, the, they were on the 30-yard line when they threw that last interception for TD on the Florida 30, down by two scores. McLeod taken down at the 28. To take a road trip with the Gator basketball team to see them take on the Stetson Hatters at the Amway Center in downtown Orlando on Monday, November 28. That's a 7 p.m. tick tip off. Get your tickets to see the Gators in your backyard at Ticketmaster.com. Nice 26 yard return by McLeod out of Tampa. And Forcier trying to shake off uh, his second interception for TD. Is going to stay on the sideline, and that's Dakota Derrick who has checked in for Furman. A junior from Conway, South Carolina. Well, Bruce Fowler waving a white flag with four minutes to go in the ball game. But you're right, Nat. This was a competitive game right up until the, the start of the fourth quarter. I, I tell you, this this Furman football team is a well-coached football team. They're a good football team. And, uh, you know, they're going to be hard to handle in their conference. Unfortunately, they have Georgia Southern and Appalachian State and Wofford and some very good teams in the Southern Conference. But uh, they are 5-3 and three in their league. Not going to make uh, the, the playoffs this year, it would not appear. Florida on the verge of picking up victory number six, becoming bowl eligible. McLeod trying to break free, but could not lose his three. And it'll be third down for the Paladins with the clock ticking down, under three minutes to play in the game. Florida State next week going to wrap up the regular season for the Gators. Will Muschamp said uh, this week that he really would like to get a bowl game to give this young team an opportunity to practice for a couple of more weeks just get better well as a as a player you look forward to a bowl game it's a trip it's fun and etc as a coach you look at it as an opportunity to get some work to get a chance to work with these young guys that get, and 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 get some more time with them because once the season's over with you can't do anything until spring Young football team, Florida. 15 true freshmen, 23 freshmen total have played. There are 50 underclassmen on this football team. And only nine scholarship seniors. So the Gators will be out signing as many as the NCAA allows to try and fill the gaps. And in all fairness, David, you know, when you when you think about this Gator football program, you know, in the past three or four years, you've had juniors coming out. You had so so much talent that uh, basically most guys are coming out early. So therefore, you don't have many seniors at this point in time. You know. Brady, you have some thoughts from the sideline on this? Yeah, definitely. You know, you talk about you know uh, Nat's point at the top with the transition, not only in schemes and coaches and coaching style, 
but you got to have the right personnel and, and, and what you want to do, and that's why you have recruiting. Florida's had some transition with guys leaving after signing with Florida a year ago. A top wide receiver headed to Texas Tech. A top running back went to Auburn. So Will Muschamp, while he has to deal with this year with the numbers being down and maybe down a little bit next year, he and his staff are going to be able to go out and sign two big classes year after year these first two years right here to be able to replenish this lineup and hopefully get Florida back to the top of the SEC. All right. Thanks Brady. Jacoby Brissett. In that quarterback Mike Gillisley the ball carrier the number three tailback the junior from the land. I tell you I, I don't know about you David but Gillisley I, I like him. I, I mean uh, you know he's got two guys in front of him and Jeff Dempson. And Chris Rainey, it makes it very tough for him to get some playing time, but every time he's put on the field, he makes plays. There, I'm gonna. Had 84 yards at Kentucky, his career high earlier this year. Florida with 54 points today, eclipsing that 48 point total they put up in Lexington against the Wildcats. And Gillisley carries again with the clock stopped for the moment. Uh, after the first down is picked up. Gators will have to uh, run one more play. Now the clock ticking again at 30 seconds. Rainey rotates back into the backfield. Yeah, but this is the victory yep. formation here. Yeah. Just going to take a knee after trailing 15 to nothing early. 22 to 7. Nat Moore at the end of the first period. Florida rallied, and uh, at the half, they had a five point lead, but it was close right down to the end of the third quarter, and really in the closing minutes until the pick six by Jelani Jenkins. This game could have gone either way, but Will Muschamp and the Gators pick up an important victory over Bruce Fowler and the Furman Paladins, 54 to 32. And, and David, you know, when you think about this defense, you give up 15 points early in the ball game, and then from there on, you start to play football, and you come up with two big pick sixes that put the Gators out front, and and and, and you run away and hide. But defensively, they finally got it together. They finally started to recognize the scheme, and then they were able to do what they want defensively to shut down this offense. First 300-yard passing game for John Brantley, four touchdowns as well for the senior, and the Gators win it by 22. Touchdown. Chevron, star player of the game. People who know cars trust the unbeatable cleaning power of Chevron with Tecron. And Jelani Jenkins knows what to do with the football when he picks off an errant pass. 71 yards for the game clinching touchdown in the fourth quarter for Jelani Jenkins, the talented linebacker for the Florida Gators out of Olney, Maryland. Now that's a guy that's. Uh knows what's going on on the field. I mean, he's been a starter and has played pretty much ever since he's been here, David. So good play recognition and then stepping in there and making the reception or the interception, shall I say, and then going the distance. Second career pick for Jelani Jenkins. This one a big one to put it away for the Gators. Let's check in with Brady and Will Muschamp. All right, we've got Coach Will Muschamp. Uh, didn't go like you scripted it, but you got a victory. Well, we made it interesting, that's for sure. But, you know, first quarter there, they came out and something they hadn't done all year, and we didn't adjust very well early. We got it adjusted well. Defensively, second half, the, the long run was just uncalled for. Shouldn't have happened. We, we missed a couple tackles. We had it at the point of attack and just didn't play it very well. Defensively, you got two pick sixes. That's nice to see. Well, it's about time, and we haven't done it all year, so that's good to see. Let's talk about the offense. Obviously, the wide receivers, Andre DeBose, continues to make plays for you now, and Quentin Dunbar gets in the end zone. Big third down play for Quentin over here on their sideline and also a touchdown, so real pleased with that. And uh, We just need to press, press forward, play more consistent. We made it interesting, and it shouldn't have been. Big game next week here in the Swamp. No question. We're looking forward to getting after Seminoles. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks, Brady. Will Muschamp facing his first Florida State, Florida test next week here in the swap and that should be very interesting the Gators win today against the Furman Paladins 54 to 32 net a couple of big defensive plays and 
Gators made a, a number of big offensive plays as well in the passing game in particular. Well, I look at it as a mission accomplished, Dave. You wanted to come in here, get that six victory, get bowl eligible. Defensively, you get some turnovers, things you hadn't been getting. <laughs> Offensively, you see Brantley has his best game. You see Andre DeBose evolve as a as a playmaking receiver. So I think his mission accomplished. Now you can look up, look ahead to the Florida State game. 54-32 is the final. Thanks to our director, Jimmy Lee Starling, our producer, John Solcer. Our entire crew here, Sun Sports on pay-per-view, along with Brady Ackerman and Nat Moore. I'm David Steele. The Gators win it by 22 over Furman and become bowl eligible with a 54-32 win. So long, everybody, from Gainesville. <laughs>